Um, I'm Anthony Fuller, I'm the product manager for Excitec and part of my role is to bring, look at new products we can bring into the company which is why I'm really excited about today's session. Um, we'll be showing you a new scan to BIM process using a product called Edgewise um, and this product will help you reduce 3D modeling time from scan data. Uh, a bit about Excitec, our slogan is design, build, manage better and we support Applies technology and solutions to companies within these three key areas. How we feel we can help you do it better is for our consultancy team, many of which come from the industry and have worked on projects themselves. Uh, we can help with BIM uh, projects, uh, projects and consultancy implementation, application training and technical support. And we also offer IT data management and facilities management such solutions. So essentially we serve everyone in these three spaces and we, our aim is to help you do it better. We are an Autodesk Platinum Partner and we're the largest in the UK. Uh, we're an authorised developer and have developed our own applications such as the Revit Toolkit. We're also a training and certification centre. We have over 110 staff and growing. Our head office is in Enfield, Middlesex, which is near North London, which is where I'm doing the recording from today. And we're certified to high company standards and have the ISO 9001 accreditation. To just get uh, introduced in today's panel, the bulk of today's webinar will be brought to you by Rob Clark. He's one of our consultants and a technical specialist. He'll be running through the Edgewise products and also showing you, uh, talking about scam to BIM process. Um, we'll also be hearing from Alex Grounds, who heads up our reality capture team, and she'll be showing how we've uh, been reviewing Edgewise and, and doing some um, return and investment studies. So I'd like to uh, hand over to Rob Clark now, who will begin the presentation. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it kind of depends where you are in the world, I suppose. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, a lot of you on the line this morning. I think uh, I'm watching this ticker go up at the moment, and we've got 156 and climbing at the moment. So it's uh, it's an ex everybody's incredibly interested in this particular subject, it appears, which is great for us to hear and see. Um, so those of you who have not met me before, as Anthony was just saying, I'm a technical specialist within the professional services team within Excitec Consulting. Uh, my specialisms are uh, things like Revit and Navisworks, and generally I'm very interested in, in interoperability and coordination. I'm very interested in getting stuff done basically within the BIM process and making sure that at the end of that process we get our deliverables that we want. One of the things that has been increasingly a requirement over the, over the last couple of years or so is uh, to be able to use point cloud data uh, to build models, or as I call that, scan to BIM workflow. So, um, Autodesk have been very busy introducing lots of new process for that, uh, which we're going to talk about, and uh, some of it is really good and some of it's a little cumbersome. And what we've been working on at Excitec is trying to make that process even more efficient, hence our new partnership with the Clear Edge team uh, to bring you the Edgewise software. So let me just take you through what we're going to go through uh, this morning, and uh, this afternoon. Um, uh, we're going to have a look at what First of all, for those of you who are not initiated, what scan to bim is, what I'm talking about, some of the challenges that come across there, and, and then the proposed workflow. And, and at that point, I want to start introducing the Edgewise software to you. Now, I'm not going to um, bore you with a bunch of slideshows for that, nor am I going to really um, give them too much upfront information about Edgewise. I'm just going to jump in and do a live demonstration of the software. Um, and we're going to have a look at all three versions of the software. Um, uh, within the uh, building space, which is the uh, Edgewise building, Edgewise structure, and Edgewise MEP, and I'll talk about the capabilities of that with you. Um, the, we'll also be passing over to Alex towards the end of the session, and then I want to talk to you about product information, some technical stuff, um, the commercials, obviously, which I'm sure some of you will be very interested in, and the training before opening up to a question and answers. Now, one of the things with the live demo, not least because I'm running three pieces of software at once, which is uh, always uh, an interesting, uh, always an interesting uh, experience on these uh, webinars. You have to cross your fingers and toes and hope it all goes well. But um, during the process, um, there will be some progress bars that come up on the screen, which take maybe a minute or two to go through. And for that reason, I figured that rather than you watching those progress bars, we'll take that opportunity to ask you some questions. Um, 
being honest with you, those questions are very useful to us in terms of market research, but ultimately I'm hoping that the, the types of questions that we're going to ask you this morning will be of general interest to everybody, and we will be sharing those results on the webinar with you this morning. So, Scantabim, what is it? What is it all about? Now, I'm, I'm guessing, looking at our attendee list, that many of you will, will know that already, will have a good idea of what that is already, but for those of you we're not initiated. Um, scan to BIM is, if we look at these two devices, these are two scanners, uh, Topcon and a Leica scanner. Um, we're, many of us are familiar with things like laser measurement devices, distos, that sort of thing. Um, these devices allow us to um, take, a, take a measurement using a laser light and actually get a very, very accurate a reflection off a surface to give us the distance away between an object. If you times that process by um, a million times a second, as some, some of these scanners can actually achieve, what you end up with is a, uh, a surface uh, model. When they also have the ability to take photographs as well, and as a result, we can uh, overlay those photographic information with the actual point cloud. So this is a, a project that we did in Glasgow recently, um, or one of the cathedrals or one of the churches up there, and you can see that we can very quickly get an, an accurate representation of what's going on, of very detailed content. Um, now, because Autodesk have been introducing uh, um, a number of pieces of software that help us, including the Autodesk Recap software, we can very quickly visualize these. Now, one of the softwares I'm not going to open up to this morning is Recap, just simply because I really don't want my computer to fall over uh, with the weight of everything. But the, um, but the Recap software allows us to bring in these complicated clouds and actually start cleaning them up and actually working with them. So when you bring in clouds, naturally, you're going to get a lot of furniture, a lot of equipment, a lot of things that you don't necessarily need. And when you want to work with these clouds, it's actually a good idea to start um, cleaning them up, clipping them down and things like that. And Recap allows us to, to do that quite, quite well. We've then got the Autodesk Revit software. So where we do want to build up a building information model, when we actually do want to bring up a, um, a, um, an actual uh, building model, an element-based model, the, um, we can use something like Revit to actually create that. So the Revit software um, has the same technology as the Recap software, and it, we can bring these point clouds in. And we have the ability using things like point snapping tools to actually snap onto that and to draw elements and just sort of trace over that cloud. It's pretty clever stuff, and, and you can get a pretty good model across. I mean, this is a model that I built up within, uh, within, around, within a few hours from a point cloud that uh, Topcon kindly made available to us of their own office. And you can see, you know, you can get a pretty accurate representation of the building pretty quickly, and it's quite good. So, currently, the sort of workflow that we might typically use is to bring in a registered cloud, um, Topcom, um, ScanMaster, for example, and Leica Cyclone can actually bring those clouds directly across from the uh, from the equipment. We can federate it because Topcon and Leica can output file formats that Recap can use. So we can federate it, bring it all together, combine it, and clean it up in in Recap. We can then model it from uh, in the Autodesk software, which seems like quite a good workflow. But there are a few challenges to that process, and I'm just going to bring in Revit here. Um, so a bit of software. Now this is a model that we've got and it's of a plant room arrangement. Now, if I look at this model, you can see, hopefully it's coming through loud and clear, that it's pretty complicated. You know, there's a, there's a lot of data in there. There's a lot of piping. There's a lot of uh, staircases. There's a lot of information. Now, if my task here is to start building up a, pipe, uh, a model of, the, say, the piping runs that exist within this model, I might start having to um, slice and dice this model up quite a lot. So one of the techniques I might use is to draw lots of grid lines, um, put elevations on those grid lines, and also draw lots of levels as well. And as a result, you can start to slice and dice the model quite well within Revit. And you can start to see these spherical shapes, um, these uh, cylinder shapes, beg your pardon, where we can actually start to get a basic profile of the pipe. Now, 
speaking from personal experience, if you try and follow all those runs through those elevations, it takes quite a long time to actually you know, find your way through the model. And it's very prone to error and mistake. And, um, and it can be quite a cumbersome process. So immediately you start to think, well, surely there must be a better way to do that. And the good news is, is that with the um, new workflow that we're proposing, we're, we're wanting to put a step in between um, the actual federation and cleanup and the actual model modeling process, we're actually proposing that we bring in an element detection process. An element detection, as you'll see within the Clear Edge EdgeWay software in just a few moments, allows us to automatically recognize elements such as piping, such as ducting, such as conduit, structural beams, structural column, as well as um, doors, windows, and wall systems. We can actually have this software automatically recognize those, translate them into native Revit elements and actually start the build-up process of this model without actually having to uh, without actually having to do everything manually. It's not a hundred percent thing. I would never we'd never claim it was. It is improving all the time. We've been working very closely with ClearEdge recently and getting and, and having quite a lot of dialogue. And some of the um, some of the innovations that are coming um, over the next 12 months from this type of software are pretty incredible in my opinion and, and uh, I'll be talking to you about some of those as we go through as well. So <clears throat> enough with the PowerPoint. I know you can get deaf by PowerPoint pretty quickly with these things. So what I'm going to do is switch right over to the um, Edgewise software which you may or may not have seen previously. I'm just going to bring this across. Great. So this is that same point cloud you saw just a few moments ago in the um, in the Revit in, um, in the Revit environment that I built the model from. Now, when I built this model in when I built the model from this in Revit, it took me quite a long time just to find you know the wall positions and things like that. It it takes a little bit of a it takes a little bit of a messing around. Now, what I've done here is I've brought through the FLS files that we um, acquired from Topcom um, for this model, and I've brought them directly into, into the um, Edgewise software. So I can quickly go in here, and I can actually go and have a look inside the model and start to see the model. Now, what I've, I, what I've also done within this model is asked Edgewise to create what we call a planar model or a surface-based model. So you might be seeing here that there's a lot of yellow um, surfaces being projected onto the actual model here. And what I'm going to do is just turn off the actual point cloud and just leave that surface-based model. It looks, in, it looks a little messy to begin with, and I'll just come out to the extents again. You can sort of see that it's quite, um, it's quite a messy looking file initially. Now, this, this surface based model, which takes, in my experience when I generated this, took about five minutes to generate from the, from the federated cloud, so it's pretty, it's pretty quick, um, uh, is what the Edgewise software is actually going to use to analyze our model and, and look for the actual walls. Um, I think it's pretty incredible how it does it, in fact. What we need to do first of all, though, before I do that, is actually just tell it where the levels are. So I'm just going to go into here, and I'm just going to pick a few levels. So I'm going to pick a level here. I'm just going to pick a level here, one here as well at the top. And I'm actually just going to go into my level editor here. And oops, that one didn't take. Let me just pick that one again. That one, and then I'm just going to come into my level editor here and just add an extra level in here as well. I'm just going to put that up at about 10 meters. Okay, we can rationalize all these numbers if we want. I'm just going to leave them for the time being to, uh, just for speedy purposes. So I've established my levels, and what I'm now going to ask it to do is to go and find the walls. Great. Right, so hopefully you can all see my screen again, and hopefully you can see that what it's done here is it's given me the walls. Now, I'm just going to turn off the observed surfaces, and that will give me the actual 
wall situation within this model. I think that's absolutely incredible, not because it's detected the walls, but because there was a heck of a lot of other information in that model, a heck of a lot of other surfaces. Edgewise, um, the software Edgewise has been smart enough to figure out that those staircases, those um, filing cabinets, those photocopiers are not actually walls. They're, even though they're a surface within the model, they're not walls. There's not enough of it. Um, but it is actually, but, um, so it's emitted those surfaces from the detection process. And we're left with what is actually, and you have to take my word from it a little, my word for it a little bit here, is actually a very good representation of the wall layout within this building. It's, uh, it's very, very close to being complete. And so, in fact, it's not far off what probably being around 80% of all the walls within the building. It's picked up a couple of erroneous ones as well. So what, where, where we do have these erroneous ones, I can click on modify wall here, and I can grab these, and I can delete them very, very quickly. It's very easy to figure these out. As well, you know, if there's, um, if there's a requirement to do a, a quick extension of a wall that maybe it's missed a little bit, you have these pull arrows and things like that, and you can pull them in. And of course, all of us hopefully know how to use Revit, so you can, uh, you can quickly modify them there as well, but very, very fast. Okay. Um, if I bring in the points again, we have some uh, glazing units here at the top. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn my observe surfaces back on and turn my wall units off. I'm going to ask it to find some objects. And the objects I'm going to ask it to find are windows. And I'm going to ask it to use this surface here. Sorry, this, uh, this surface here. And then I'm going, to use a te I'm going to create a template. And how I create a template is I just draw a crossing box. Missed, try again. If there was any doubt that this is a live demonstration, that should now uh, be omitted as a doubt. So I'm just going to draw a crossing box over there. It's quite difficult to see, but it's actually highlighted um, the, uh, the window. So I'm just going to press OK. And it will take a second just to go through. And it's found the windows. It's got a few of those. These are probably slightly different size, but it's gone through and, and picked up a load of them. Um, you would do that two or three times to get the um, to get the various variations of that, but I'll leave that as it is for now, just for time purposes. So I'm just going to take my database away again, and my off services, and bring my walls in. Okay. Great. Um, the last thing you can do with modify wall as well, as I should have said, was I can right click on this and edit the levels. If I edit the levels, I can take that down to the ground floor level, because it obviously didn't have a surface in there for, um, to detect that particular wall, but I can take those down without too much of an issue. Right, so I'm just going to now go to my file here and export to the Revit software. Set export complete. So it takes a few seconds, as you can see. I'm just going to come across to my Revit software here. And what ClearEdge have done is they've created a little plugin for the uh, Revit software. So I can open the model here. And what I'll do is go to my data set. And I'm just going to go grab the Revit model that I just created, which is that one. Um, Edgewise is capable of fully working with um, with the um, sh uh, shared coordinates within Revit. I won't demonstrate that today, but that functionality is there as well. So if you do have geo-referenced clouds and you want to make sure that things are jumping in in the right place, then we can do that without too much of an issue. Okay, and we get this summary, which tells me that for one reason or another, we've lost a window, not sure why. 24 out of 24 walls were created, 12 of the 13 windows were created. So if I just do a zoom extent here, 
you can see that we've got our um, elements in here. Okay, should have spent a couple of more minutes probably in the Edgewise software just resolving a couple of issues. Um, but, you know, for demonstratory purposes, hopefully that sort of proves concept. These window elements are actual windows. It does create proper families um, within the software. It does that for doors as well. I won't demonstrate doors just because it's exactly the same process, um, but it does that as well. The walls that it's producing are completely native walls. I really like the fact that what it's doing here is it's actually creating different wall types. Um, one of the things that we're working with edgewise is just the rounding process for this as well, and, and that will be sorted pretty quickly. But you can see here that we've got the different wall types that it's generated, um, and you can see it's generated different wall types for different millimeters, uh, for different um, widths. The way it's detecting the widths, by the way, if you're interested, or the thicknesses, beg your pardon, is it's basically detecting that there's two surfaces in that cloud and it's working out the distance between them. Um, where a surface doesn't exist on the other side of the cloud, it will just use a default wall type, which we can then, of course, edit ourselves if we, if we want to. I'm just going to do something else here as well. I'm just going to go to this top view um, and just have a look at this wall here. And, and hopefully this will come through as a process. I'm just going to click on it and go to the Edgewise toolkit here and go to the Add Database option. And I'm just going to bring in that database that I've just created and just link it in. Um, what I'm able to do here is I can, show the, um, I can show the intensity of the points, first of all. And what I really like about this process is that, and hopefully this is coming through in webinar, and this is probably the highest risk bit for me in terms of being able to see it. But there is, um, there is a, the points being shown in there. Let me just push out to the full uh, 3D, and hopefully that will start to show up. And we can see that the associated points are present on that wall. What I really like about that is um, um, is that it doesn't necessarily, we don't need the whole cloud, so it keeps the performance of the model um, really well. Um, if I just switch up to the front here, we can see that it's showing me the distance away from, um, let me just switch to the color distance. It's, but it, by color coding it, it's showing me the distance from the actual wall. So green points are actually in the wall, obviously, or, or flush with the wall, and uh, the blue and yellow points are, are away from it. So if I go to refit wall here, I have another, a number of options here. So what I can do is I can say I want to rebuild this wall as a best fit, which is one option. But I really like the fact that we've got a as built option here as well. And what this as built option does, incredibly, I think, is if I press OK on this, again, it takes a second. And we get a couple of little issues, but it's, I don't know if that comes through well enough, but this wall has now been converted into a face-to-face -face wall. And what it's done is the wall now has a slight arc on it. Okay, so basically what's happening there is instead of it creating a sort of linear uh, faced straight wall, it's, it's accepting the fact that this wall is bowed in slightly and it's created a mass within the Revit environment and then it's applying that mass to the actual, uh, to the wall element. So it's giving us a much clearer and more accurate representation. So if you're at that higher end level of building modeling, that some of you said you were, 16% of you said you were, then, uh, then you should hopefully be able to, uh, be able to get a better, um, snap, if you like, to that particular wall item. So what I want to do now is just move across to the MEP version of the software as well and just show you some of the capability in here as well. And again, absolutely brilliant software uh, in for this. Um, I think probably even more valuable than what we've just seen with the architectural stuff uh, for the challenges that I spoke about earlier on. Um, the the uh, again, when we actually process this model, it will um, it will automatically detect a number of the elements in here already. Now, unlike the last model where um, where I didn't do any cleanup, I didn't take it through recap. With this particular model, it was quite a complicated um, office uh, project that we did, and and quite significant in size was the cloud. Um, and it was, you know, when we did the automatic detection, it was 
Edgewise was understandably finding a lot of pipes that weren't actually pipes because there was a lot of syndrical, uh, a lot of syndrical uh, elements within the model. Really, what I wanted to do was just have Edgewise detect what was going on in the uh, ceiling void or the plenum void in the in the ceiling space. So what we're seeing here is a, a cutout version of the cloud that I the overall cloud that I had. So underneath this cloud would be the normal office area, the occupiable area, and what we're seeing here is the actual um, depth of the ceiling space as well, and I'm trying to get the conduits and ducts that are in that space. How I've, um, how I've clipped that down into this particular size of cloud is to actually just use the Autodesk recap software, and the recap software to E57 um, uh, can then be then imported into the Edgewise software. So if you unify your cloud in, in recap to E57, um, it can then be imported into the Edgewise software um, in its clipped form which is very useful indeed. Sorry. The jumping around has got nothing to do with the actual software. It's purely to do with my bad driving. So apologies if I'm making anybody feel slightly ill in the process. And um, so what it's done here is it's detected a number of these um, uh, pipes and um, ducts and conduits already. But those it miss, misses, we can actually go and um, we can actually go and have it detect them for us. So I'm just going to come into this into this area here. So hopefully that's coming through. There is a pipe element here, but the software's not picked it up, mainly because I had the density of point detection turned right up when I did it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go into the extract mode. And what you do is all you need to do is you need to just draw a box over enough points that it can actually recognize it. So I'm just going to double click now and it finds them. Now that to me is just again pretty amazing stuff. So again I'm just going to draw this box over this area, double click, it goes okay I've got a cylinder and it finds them. And sometimes we get. Let's try this last one as well. Maybe push them a look. Yep, I thought it was. There's no, uh, not enough points in that space. But you can go and connect those up. Now, the other thing that this software has is it has what we call smart sheet technology. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go into the smart sheet screen, and it brings up this. Um, it brings up this dialog box. In this dialog box, I can see every single pipe that is detected within my software, within my model, sorry. And I can actually run through these quite quickly, and you can see it highlights them for me. Now, I can switch this into what we call inspection mode. And if I go into inspection mode, I can switch it into barrel view. Now, when I click on the um, pipe, it's going to show me the actual view down the uh, actual pipe itself and we can see what points it used to detect that pipe conduit or ducting. Any of that sort of strikers as being, um, as being incorrect or not pipes, not conduits. Let me see if I can find a sort of bad find here. <laughs> problem with good software, it, um, you s sometimes struggle to find, there was one in here, let me just find it. So maybe we're suspicious of that one, maybe we think, well, that doesn't quite look like one, I'm just going to click on the points and just absolutely make sure, and now it's actually giving me all the points that it's shown. Um, I'm just going to ask it to recalculate and actually make sure it can still find it. Um, I can also go to um, the broadside view of it, and I'll just click on that again, and I can actually see, you know, where it's uh, detected it, and I can actually have a look. And I think probably it's got that right. You can see from the cylinder file, it, it looks like that is a, a duct in position. So any that we discover that isn't a duct, yeah, okay, there's one that I would say probably isn't one. You know, it's 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 
found enough in that point, those set of points there to think that is a cylinder. Uh, others, people looking at that might say, well, that doesn't look like one. So all I need to do is to highlight the pipe that I found and press the delete key. It, it really is as simple as that. Again, maybe that one as well. And I suppose as you get down to the bottom of this list with the lower diameters and the lower convergence of points, then we're probably going to get some more, we're probably going to start getting those erroneous results at that particular point. Again, that looks like an erroneous result. So we get rid of it. So you can uh, so you can see that it's very very quick and easy to sort of push through this particular whole model and make sure that it's uh, make sure it's finding it. We do have the ability to change any element that we want. So if I just click on one and then highlight it, I can see that's the one that I'm looking at. If I decide that that's not a pipe, I can change it into a duct, for example. And very quickly we can just change those. We can highlight all as well and things like that if we want to as well. We are able to, with any of these pieces of ducting, um, use things like um, clean pipes just to see if we can get any of the pipes to. Um, sometimes when you're creating pipes, obviously they can come slightly out of alignment. So this will allow us just to bring those into alignment so that we can more easily snap them together in, in the Revit software. Um, we can also do Easy Connect. And Easy Connect will look at. Um, actual connections within the model and will allow us to um, find the connections such as maybe between those pieces of ducting for, throughout the whole thing. So I'm just going to press OK and you can see there it says actually obviously that is one that is one ducting run so it's connected it all up for us and, uh, and we can see the results of that. We can also do that connection manually as well and I won't go through that but that connection is there. Um, and all that, all we do to do that is just snap between the two points to do the manual connection as well. And we can also do all these editing tools. So if I go to edit on this and then click on this pipe, I can click on this and expand it to wherever I need it to be and put it wherever I want it to be. So it's, it's very, very uh, intuitive in that sense. We've also got the ability here to apply the standards. And if I apply standards, um, I can apply the European ISO 2531, for example. And if I press on that and press OK, what that will have done is in my um, diameters here, the diameters will have all been rationalized to the European standards. And again, uh, we can do an export to Revit. And we can push this across. And we can, when we're pushing it across, we're, we're able to either bring it across as family objects or as placeholders. At this point in time, unless you're using um, a, a CAD software, we don't get the fittings that come across with it at this point. Um, but I was talking to um, I was talking to the guys earlier on about that, and um, in January next year. There is a hope that uh, we'll be allowed, we'll be moving towards getting elbows out. Um, or bends out of the of the connections, and the software will be automatically able to put the bends in, and um, and we'll export those as Revit families. Um, the, it's something that ClearEdge are working very hard on at the moment, and um, and believe it or not, the problems more lie with the Revit software. And apparently, when they transfer those families across, it's chucking them, um, the Revit's chucking them out again. But they they're working with Autodesk quite closely to uh, to get that particular issue resolved. That one, um, yeah, that'll do. It's not actually today's, but we'll go with it anyway. Um, and um, and if I go to the fine detail mode, you can see that those pipes and ducts and so forth have come through into the into the environment. You know, it's again native pipes, uh, native pipe and ducting um, with correct radiuses and so forth that we would want. So, yeah, saving could potentially save us a lot of time. Last but not least, we'll switch over to here and this is the structural version of Edgewise. So this is an underground car parking model that we've been working on and um, this car parking model has a lot of steel work, both um, concrete and concrete um, uh, columns, um, but we've also got steel I-beam as well.
So this time, there isn't, just to be clear, there isn't a um, object, it doesn't automatically go and find all the I-beams and columns for us in this case, but we can, a bit like the piping extractor tool, um, have it automatically extract that information. So I'm just going to come to, I don't know, we'll, we'll, try, we'll try this column here. Uh, I'm just going to come to this, and I'm just going to go and say, what I'm after is a metric concrete, and it's a rectangular shape, and I want it to automatically find the size for me. And a bit like the previous tool that I used, I'm just going to draw a box around the general area of the column. And it finds it. Simple as that. Finds it, and it sizes it. And we can just use our pull arrows to pull it to the correct height. Okay. And then I'll come across here. And I'll take this up at the top here. So this time I want a, um, I'm working with UK Steel and it's an I-beam in shape, but you can also have channels and angles. And Edgewise has um, the UK Steel library built into it, the Chorus Blue Book. So I'm just going to go to Extract here, and I'm just going to go and grab a general box over the area. I think I might have missed that. Let me just, I might have to try that one again. Double click. Nope, it got it. See, even when I think it's going to miss it, it still gets it. <laughs> um, so, um, so, the, um, so you can see now that it's found that pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. Oh, I tell you, there's another little function here. I'm just going to press the F key on my keyboard, and that basically, oh, God. <laughs> One of the things um, uh, Revit users will find is that the, uh, the zoom in and out um, buttons are slightly different to the Revit software, so my small size brain that I have unfortunately seems to carry on trying to use uh, Revit commands in the Edgeway software and then uh, wondering why they don't work. Um, so, the, uh, so that's why I'm uh, struggling with my navigation sometimes. Um, the, uh, but you can see it does a very, very quick and uh, very easy extraction of those particular elements. It really is just drawing crossing boxes over it and, and it goes and looks at those points and says, okay, that is that size of beam. Um, again, we can use our smart sheet technology, and if I click on one of these, it shows me the uh, it shows me the beam, and that's the rectangular columns again. Um, and we can say, you know, if we want to, that that is a you know we can increase those sizes if we want to. It does um, it does check um, the that the beam size is available to us in Revit, and you can see there that it says Revit valid, and at the moment they're all on yes, which basically means that it's decided that, the, that it is a valid size within the Revit software, and that it's going to be happy to export those to us. Um, to be honest, I've not had a valid no yet, so, um, so it's pretty comprehensive in terms of its database, but there's perhaps a couple of um, niche scenarios that that might happen. Um, so, but at least the software tells you that there's going to be an issue with that process before it um, before it does it. Again, because if it's um, if it's got the size slightly wrong or it's it's misaligned it slightly, or perhaps you think again it's a false result like what we had in the uh, piping a second ago, you can just come in here with the smart sheets, just tweak the size of it and change it to however you want, and just increase and decrease those sizes in whatever way you wish. It's, I, the beauty of Edgewise, I think, the fact that, you know, there's such complicated software like this can be demonstrated as quickly as this, um, I think shows the beauty of this software. It is so easy to use. You know, it isn't rocket science or uh, any <laughs> site miss, hopefully not misselling our uh, training services on it, but it's not rocket science to actually use it. It's, it's, it's actually quite quick and easy and intuitive to pick up. There's a few little intricacies that you need to get with it. But it works, and I think that's the big key part, and that's the amazing part about it is we've thrown lots of different models at it now. These, are, these data sets that we're using now are not clear edges data sets. They are our data sets, Excitex data sets that come from Alex's, Alex's team, with the, with the exception of the TopCon cloud that you saw at the beginning, come from Alex's team. 
uh, the reality capture team from surveys that we've done ourselves, and we've tested it, and it works well, as, uh, as um, Alex is going to talk to you about just shortly. Got those in, so I'm just going to go and grab my actual model, and you can see that it's pulled those across. Okay, so we get our steel work, our beams, and it all comes across um, in, uh, in uh, very, very quickly. Thanks, Rob. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, briefly about me, myself, I've been at XI Tech now since March, uh, setting up the Reality Capture Unit, and we are looking at to try and take uh, laser scanning and all things in the capturing of reality forward into the greater AC industry. And yes, we undertake our own laser scanning and use of drones, but we're also looking at how and where this technology will take us and what we can do. And part of this was to run some case studies. So I'm going to talk about a single case study here. We have trialed it on others, um, some grade two listed, just to see what's happened. I don't recommend it for grade two listed buildings, which are extremely deviant or vertical. However, I certainly recommend it for MEP design. This is data that we've scanned uh, for second stage MEP fit out. It was initially delivered in Revit and a bit of AutoCAD without any help from Edgewise, and it was rather a long time. And here you can see the site itself. It's quite a large site um, and quite congested. As you can see, not easy to work with. And both these images have come through from Recap. So, here you can see some time taken. Before we used Edgewise, you're looking at a good five plus working days. In fact, I'd say probably longer than that. We didn't really time it, but we know it took a long time and we would take, it took us around a week to two weeks to actually get the whole thing out. However, when we actually brought it into Edgewise, uh, we brought it in and ran it off. The whole aspect of actually taking the registered point cloud through in running it into Revit took us a day, and it is quite a complex model, as you will see as we run through, as we start joining items up, taking bends up, cleaning the point cloud up, making sure it all fits together properly, and then we take it into Revit. Obviously, you can overlay both very well, and it was the length of time. We could, I could not believe how quick this was to have one full working day creating what was a complex model and yes, it's not complete, but we're there and we're a lot better. How much better this is, you are save, seeing time savings that are quite ridiculous compared to what we were a couple of years ago. Now, further on from this, there are some good other case studies um, out there, particularly from people who have undertaken over in the States, and there's a couple in the UK as well of people I know, and they having the same sort of time returns. So the best thing you can say is go and have a look at them. They're at our, on our product pages, and you'll read all about them, and you'll start to realize it's not just what Rob's shown you. It's not what I've talked about. It, everyone who uses this really has the difference, and it is pretty amazing. And on that, very brief it was, you will be handed back over to Rob. Uh, from a technical information point of view, which are some of the things I just wanted to run through with you, because I know there'll be a few techie guys on the line that will be interested in this stuff. Um, the uh, file formats that it currently works with, and these have been uh, added to recently, is um, uh, PTG, which is a Leica, the uh, Zola format, ZFS, FLS, which is Faro Topcon, and we've also got PTX and PTS. Uh, PTS isn't recommended though, um, so if you do have PTS files then um, they're probably not a fair test initially um, um, if it's the first time out in with the software. Um, if, um, if you have already unified PTX files, um, Edgewise does need ununified files, so if you have unified files um, it does have some, it has ability to split unified PTX and also has the ability to split E57 which is what recap has down into individual PTX files as well. And um, it also has the Regal RSP to Edgewise as well. Um, as I said, uh, Autodesk Recap can export Unified E57, um, which is a recap workflow. It's also integrated with the Leica and Cyclo 
uh, software for finishing. So if you want to take it out to Cyclone to do some clipping and surf off in there as well, you can do that through the COE export. <clears throat> um, it should be said though, with regards to all that clipping stuff that I've just talked about, that you know, uh, for the structural and the architectural examples that I showed you, which were quite complex models, I had no need to do any cleanup on those uh, ahead of time um, before doing it. You can do it afterwards, as it says on there. Um, but you, there was no need to do it beforehand. The software functioned well without that cleanup. So don't do it for just the sake of it. Sometimes it's worth doing the test first, and then if it, it is finding a lot of erroneous results, then consider doing some cleanup. Um, the um, Edgewise uh, Revit plugin uh, is available for versions through 2012 all the way through to 2015. Um, and it's also worth mentioning for those of you who can take advantage of this that Edgewise MEP can also export to um, Aviva's PDMS uh, format and there is a PSF exporter for CADWEX uh, due soon as well. A couple of little things that I've not put on there, um, mainly because it's kind of hot off the press, is there is some work being done here to um, in include more formats, including the Archicad and the OpenBIM IFC format as well. Um, which is anticipated in, um, next year at some point. We can't give you a final release for that because there's a lot of technical issues to work out. But the Edgewise, uh, the Clear Edge team is working hard and they have a full roadmap uh, to get those in, onto our desks as quickly as possible. Clearly, um, this software is pretty bleeding edge. And I think um, I was speaking to the Edgewise, uh, Clear Edge people, and they've said that they're hoping to bring out several minor releases a year and two major releases a year, which gives you an idea of how quick the development is happening on these particular products. Um, so you um, so you can expect the functionality for these softwares to be very much not static, very much fluid, and and be uh, improving all the time. Just to make clear on what does what, um, the a bit like Revit, it is available in in uh, in a few different flavors. Um, you can have Edgewise Building, which gives us wall extraction and window and door extraction, as you've seen. Uh, you can have MEP, which does pipe, uh, round duct, conduit, and has the smart sheets and the resizing and also the industry standards. Uh, Edgewise Structure, which is beam and column extraction, UK steel sizes, uh, again the smart sheet. And it's worth mentioning as well that it even works with fireproof steel. So if there is fireproofing on the steelwork, as there was in that car park model actually, you'll still be able to make use of it. Uh, the Revit plugin, which imports uh, and refits walls, um, and actually a, a little niche thing that I found, and it is mentioned in small print on the website, but is actually very useful, I think, that it does expose point clouds in the family editor if you're editing the walls and doors that it creates for you, uh, which I thought was brilliant, I have to say, and I'm thinking about a particular project that I worked on in the past where I wish I'd had that. Um, if you have need, <laughs> as some people do, and why Revit has got a one-box version. There is a suite which includes the building, MEP, structure, and of course the plugin. It should be mentioned, by the way, that the plugin comes with every single version of Edgewise, um, as well as the suite. Um, you do need the plugin to bring in the Edgewise stuff if your Edgewise isn't installed on that machine, and the plugin can be purchased as just an additional add-on uh, for machines that don't have Edgewise if you want it. I'm just going to pass to Anthony, um, who's just going to just run you quickly through the commercials um, before we go to Q&A. Thanks for that, Rob. Uh, good presentation. Um, so yeah, just to run through uh, some of the commercials for the Edgewise products, the building and MEP and structure perpetual licenses, if you buy them on their own, um, they're currently priced around £2,344. Um, annual maintenance, you heard Rob speaking about two major releases a year. Um, that's typically about 20% of the cost of the license. Obviously, you get your upgrades with that, but importantly, you get um, some technical support. Uh, we'll be offering uh, first-line support for those of you who purchase it through Excitec, uh, supported by um, Edgewise. If you're not in the, in the UK, you can obviously purchase this product uh, through either a local reseller or contact the Edgewise team directly, uh, and they'll be able to give you some prices in your local currencies. Uh, as Rob mentioned, Edgewise do do a number of suites. They do the BIM suite, um, which obviously includes the MEP structure and building. And slightly more expensive uh, is the full suite. Um, they've recently simplified and, and launched their network 
licensing, which is really good for me because sometimes these these uh, pricing modules can get rather complicated. But um, simply, if, if you want a network version of the product, it's another fifteen hundred pounds on top of the perpetual license cost. Um, but what you need to also factor in is that the annual maintenance cost will be twenty percent of that that total cost. Um, Rob alluded to the Revit plugin, so it comes with every purchase of the software, but you may particularly if you go down the network route, you may want some of your members to have access to the plugin itself uh, so they can actually import the clear edge uh, models. Uh, that's available there. 14-day uh, trials are available on requests. Uh, we have a limited supply of these at the minute, um, but if you would really like to trial the product, uh, get in contact with myself. Uh, we should be getting some more trials in the coming weeks, so just email your requests through and we'll get trials out to you and that you can um, test the software for yourself. Thanks, Rob. Thanks very much, Anthony. Um, as I said, uh, using the Edgewise software isn't rocket science, and, I, and, and I'd be amiss as a consultant not to mention to you that uh, the ClearEdge team have put some excellent help guides actually into the software. So in the software itself, you're going to find videos, um, you're going to find PDF documents which have given, got, got sort of exercises that you can do and, and tips and tricks and things like that and the videos are very much a sort of good help guide into how to use the software so you may find that that is sufficient for you. However if you, if you are, have got a larger team and you want to have consistent knowledge for that team then obviously as a consulting firm then we can help you with that uh, training knowledge transfer element um, and we've got a few different solutions suggested for that. Um, we um, we can do, a, if you're just using a single module of Edgewise, so that be the structure, the MEP or the architecture, we're, we're, we're recommending a half day on-site workshop or a two hour recorded webinar with a Q&A session with, which will be presented just for yourselves. Um, if you're doing the whole suite, so you need all of them, then we would recommend that you take the, we take a full training day module. Um, the uh, birth options there cover the registration of cloud workflow from Recap, although it should be mention that that doesn't include lessons on how to use recap just how we get it out of recap um, object detection object cleanup and obviously the export into the Revit software um, we also as standard offer um, a, a recap workshop which is just again half day because that's not particularly rocket science as a piece of software either registering the cloud navigation clipping regions and actually pressing it, it for edgewise now a number of organizations that we've worked with recently have needed to um, really get into this workflow and, and understand not just the particular module of one piece of software like Recap or Edgewise, but understand the whole process, the whole interoperable process of how to get it, everything from A to B. So we've come up with a modulized training program for that, which is up to, and I stress up to, five, uh, three days. Um, it could be a lot less than that, and it wouldn't, you wouldn't need any of the additional stuff on the screen if you went down that route. Um, so you can, that would cover the edgewise modules as appropriate, so if you didn't need all of them, that would reduce that time down a little bit in terms of the free days. The recap workshops, so if you know how to use re recap, that would take away half a day of that free day. Um, working with traditional survey coordination, and then some of the important stuff like modeling from point cloud in Revit, and we've got a lot of tips and tricks and, and processes that we would show you in that regarding uh, some of the techniques that we've used to model from clouds some of the lessons that we've learned, as well as the advanced modeling. And that would involve massing and adaptive components and things like that, which can be very useful in the creation of a complex geometry process. So all of those courses have Revit fundamentals training or at least significant demonstratable project experience as a prerequisite. So if you don't have that experience, um, then you would need to get that first. And of course, we can help you with that as well if you need to.